Hey, it's Senkrad from the two, doing another video for my walkthrough for Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. Um, in this and the other three videos, I'll be going over the builds that I suggest and uh, how to build them, why I build them that way, etc., etc. Uh, to uh, preface every single one of these videos, I will say um, right off the bat that, that this guide is based off of no mods, um, which means that this team composition is based off of the best case scenario, in my opinion. I'll explain why uh, I believe that with facts, um, but uh, it's based off of what you can do in the game based off of optimal uh, op optimal situations. Now, now, why is that important? Because there are mods that allow you to uh, change everyone. E every companion, every follower in the game, you can change their stats from the ground up. Um, there's mods which allow you to actually create four people at creation. Now, uh, if you're going to be doing that, obviously uh, the four-person uh, symmetry and uh, the way they work together changes. Because if you can build four people from the ground up, it's no longer, you know, what what's the best thing I can do with the people that I get and build into that. It changes the dynamics of everything. And so just remember that right off the bat, that that's what this is based off of. Um, so <clears throat> without further ado, we're going to be going over the very first one, Power Build Ranger, in this video. Um, explaining how to build into it, explaining why I, I suggest all these, because we have questions with why do I do this, why do I do that. And I'll explain it here in this video. Um, Power Build Ranger, I suggest building this into your main Source Hunter. Now, this is the most powerful build in the game. There are many, many people that have said that if they could do a four-person creation or, or, or could edit people, the Ranger would be most likely what you would play as for two, if not three, uh, of the people that you actually have in your party. That's how powerful the Ranger is. Okay, so... At creation, if, you, if you're curious about which ones to take at creation, go to my at, at, at creation video, uh, and, and I'll explain how to actually do that. Um, but things such as, uh, so point number one. So the very first things that you want to, to build up will be point number one, then two, then three, then four, etc., etc. Okay. Now what this means is that scoundrel level the skill expert marksman water fire air earth charisma you want all of them at skill level one now means just a single point in there once all of those are at one then move on to make bow witchcraft water expert marksman skill level two once all of those are at skill level two then move on to number three, which is water, expert marksman to level four, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to go on down the list. But we're going to explain, I'm going to explain quickly why for each one and then go down it. So why do we want a, a single point in Scoundrel? Okay, well, Scoundrel, uh, a single point in this is going to give you um, uh, walk in shadows, shadows. Did I just say shatters? Wow, that's <laughs> that's remarkably southern for somebody not from the south. Um Walk in shadows, uh, hover feet, also called winged feet, um, and uh, the third thing is uh, fast track. Fast track or uh, post level fifteen, you're going to change that to adrenaline. Now, the, the the applications of those three skills are limitless, and with this build, the ranger, your dex is going to be very, very high, very, very high, and so there's going to be a hundred percent chance to have those hit. Now, walk in shadows. Um, is what's going to enable you to steal everything in the game, to, to open up areas in the game. But not only that, in combat, if you ever find, especially in honor mode, that holy crap, I'm going to die, um, and you don't want to waste a talent on escape artist or whatever it is that allows you to escape from combat, walk in shadows is 2 AP. That's all it is, 2 AP. Which means that if you're in a really tough situation, you can throw down walk in shadows with, for 2 AP, run them out, run them out of the fight, click retreat, and get them out of there. Um... It's a it's a an amazingly cheap, effective get out of jail free card. 
Hover feet, same thing, same thing. You don't want them to leave the battle necessarily, but they've they've screwed you up and you're sitting on fire. Well, throw hover feet on yourself uh, and you should be good to go. Hover feet also allows you to um, best about 85% of the puzzles in this game. Um, fast track uh, early on in the game, it allows it's a, once again a very very low AP cost, two AP. And it allows you to cast self haste on yourself, which is great. Uh, especially if somebody slows you, you can then just counter that slow with two AP. Um, it, it's very effective. Now, why switch it to adrenaline? Well, because when you get to post level fifteen, um, you should be taking out everything within the first turn, maybe second turn in some cases. Um, I mean, as you've seen, you'll see in my end game bosses, you can take out all three end game bosses, including the second one. You can take all three of them out in the first turn. And what does that mean? It means that adrenaline becomes more powerful. Why? Because you can unload your master level skill, cast adrenaline on yourself and unload a second master skill. It, it, it enables you to, it enables you to wipe out anybody in the game in the first turn. Fast track, you know, won't kick in to turn two or three or whatever. It, it, it's a, you know, haste on subsequent turns and so if you're killing everyone on the first turn fast track becomes worthless and adrenaline becomes overpowered and that's why you switch it to that okay expert marksman why do you want one in this because you're going to open up three skills right off the bat early on in the game in you know an expert marksman you're going to want this skill to eventually become a five why do you make it one? Eh, because one is super cheap, and you're only gonna, you're only getting one per level early on anyway. One skill point to put in, and uh, throw one in that. It'll open up three skills for you to to use with your bow, which you know you're gonna need. Water, water's gonna become a four later on. So once again, once again, this is gonna this is setting you up for the future. It also Having a point in water is recommended for at creation because you're going to want your restoration spell, which is your healing spell, which comes in water. Uh, fire, why one in fire? Because you're not going to put any more points in fire. Fire is fire is a worthless tree. Um, meteor shower, which is a master level skill, is decent, but not great. And everything from you know level one to level four to get it is totally crap, and so it's not worth the investment. So put one point in here and pick up your three. I'll be going over what the skills are as well later on. Uh, one point in air. Why one point in air? Uh, because one point in air is overpowered in this game, and one point in earth. The the earth, air, and scoundrel love one point in those skills is is brutally overpowered. Why? Because air level one enables you to use the teleport skill. Teleport is unbelievably effective the whole game, and it requires no extra intelligence. So even on your dumb characters, they can use that. Um, te teleport's phenomenal. So anyway, air earth, your you, you, terrible uh, earth has terrible mass level skills. Doesn't matter because their novice skills are phenomenal. We'll go over why you or what those specific skills are, as I said later. Charisma, one. I get this. Why do you put one in charisma? Um, because it costs nothing, first of all. It costs nothing. One point is nothing in this game. I mean, that is nothing. Um, and what does it do? Well, as I explained in my crafting section, you can craft a plus one to charisma uh, gear in a necklace, uh, uh, two rings, and I believe a belt. Um... That gives you plus four, which and five is max. So what that means is you put a one in charisma, you put on all that gear. For every rock, paper, scissors in the game, you don't have to save scum it as often if you're doing that, which is what I'd recommend because rock, paper, scissors is a really stupid feature in the game. Um, but not only that, having a five in charisma is necessary to open up certain dialogues that would not open up uh, without it. Uh, and as well as having the talent Pet Pal, for example, the Spider Queen. The Spider Queen in this, you can get some easy uh, uh, experience right off the bat, and also al she'll allow you to travel through her kingdom. Uh, if you have a 5 in Charisma, and you charm her, and you have Pet Pal, so you can actually talk to her, for example. So that's why you do that. Okay, It opens up those dialogues, it allows you to win Rock, Paper, Scissors a lot faster, 
and it's great for some extra experience. So then you're going to move on to number two, bow, uh, witchcraft, water, expert marksman. Why? Because these are going to be, it's going to funnel down, uh, you'll see, into the, the, the skills that are going to be your most powerful. So why are you going to put bow to, bow to two? Because eventually it's going to be five. You might as well get it up to two at this point in time because it's it's what's going to increase your damage. Witchcraft, why bring that up to two? Because, you know, eventually you're going to get that up to four. You might as well bring it up at this point in time. Water, same thing. You're going to bring that up to a four eventually. Uh, so bring that up to a two. Now, expert marksman, same thing. So why, why are we doing this like this? Because having a master level skill, having a master level skill before level uh, levels where they can even use it or learn it, it, it is wasteful. And so it's much more effective to have level 2, level 2, level 2, level 2 than it is to have a level 5 in something and you can't even use a master level skill. So then we're going to go on number 3. So at about this time, you're going to be moving water and expert marksman up to level 4. And the reason why you're going to be doing this is because at around level uh, 15, this is where this is going to be happening, you're going to hit level 15 and be able to put 4 points into water and expert marksman, one or the other, at, at a pretty close to level 15. When you hit that point, bring water or expert marksman up to four, learn your master level skill of, of uh, rain of arrows and uh, hail attack. Number four, you're going to then, after you've learned that, you're going to bring your bow up to five. Why are you going to do that next? Because bow level five is what's going to enable that rain of arrows and expert marksman to deal massive amounts of damage. So that's why you want your bow up to five next. The next thing you're going to do is bring witchcraft up to four. Why are you going to do that? Because this is going to enable you to learn soul sap, which, you know, if you want to use that on some bosses as the game goes on, that's what you're going to want next. Expert marksman five. Why are you going to do that? Because <clears throat> at that point in time, you're going to learn arrow spray. Why is that important? Because if you want to use, if you've decided that you really want to use that uh, in the final battles, that uh, is the best time to use that ability. It mo from level 15 to level 22, uh, Arrow Spray has very, very, very limited use uses. The last three bosses in the game, Arrow Spray is phenomenal against, and so that's what you do there. If you decide to give her the book, if you decide to give her the book that increases uh, skill points, uh, put the points into bodybuilding, willpower, uh, etc., Okay, now we're going to go into talents. So what are the talents you want at creation? Far Out Man, Light Stepper. Why? Because Far Out Man is great because this enables you to cast your spells further away. This is going to be important, useful, the whole game, especially with things like summons, especially if she's in the back. She wants them a little bit more forward. Light Stepper, that's going to enable you to find traps, find um, secret treasures, etc., etc. Now that will be used in conjunction with plus one per perception gear that you can keep in your backpack for... For times that you you think there might be treasure around or, or traps around, as well as burn my eyes, which increases your your perception skill, as well as perception potions, which are made by combining an eye and an empty potion bottle. Um, that's how that's gonna be done. Pet pal allows you to talk to pets. So why is this important? Because if, if even even if you beat the game a bunch of times and you and you know how things go and you don't need to cheat by talking to to animals, this opens up quests that won't be uh, available without it. Um, and so it's good for experience, the whole game. And, um, so get it. Stench, why? Because it, uh, keeps you from being attacked as often. Uh, it decreases people's, uh, feelings towards you, which means that you sell gear less, but money is irrelevant in this game. You know, post, I don't know, level 10. And so that, that doesn't matter. Sidestep is uh, more survivability. Now you're going to get stench and sidestep uh, to, to help help you with survivability. Why? Because eventually you're going to be getting glass cannon. Glass cannon is going to make you very um, low in the HP range. Uh, seven elemental ranger. Why not? I like throwing this down um, because you're going to have your five in expert marksman. So you might as well do it. See, what, see how you like that. Okay, now stats. As at creation, you're going to be putting... Two into dex, two into intellect, one into perception. Now, what this means is that when you when your guy gets created, he's going to be a seven, a seven, and a six. Uh, by mid game, so I would say around level fourteen, your stats are going to be nine in dex, uh, nine in intellect, 
seven in perception. And what does this mean? It means you're going to put, you know, one point dex, one point in intellect as you level up. Then you're going to put one point in dex, one point in intellect, and then one point in perception as you level up. Yeah, that's the kind of, so you'll go from 776 to 876, 886, you know, 986, 997, if that even made sense. It should. So that's how you level up. It's, it's the proportions. By the end of the game, you should be 11, 11, 8. Uh, Dex, Intellect, Perception, these will be your base stats. Now, I'll show you that. You hover over the, the stat. It'll tell you what the base stat is, 11, 11, 8. So that's what that is. Okay. Uh, if you want to read my, you know, how to specific play, you can actually do that in the guide. Um, what we're going to go over here is to the skills. Okay, so level one, air, as I suggested, everyone's going to be uh, getting this. Okay, Everyone's going to at least be level level one in air. Okay, everyone's going to get teleportation. Okay, your dual wielding shadow blade and leadership knight. So that's not important here. Okay, so blitz bolt, bitter cold. So the ranger, you're going to want teleportation, blitz bolt, and bitter cold. Okay, those are your three that you're going to be getting on her. Uh, level one earth. So your ranger is going to be getting this. She's going to want boulder bash, midnight oil, and summon spider. Those are the three, and she's those are all novice, so you can get them right off the bat. Uh, summon spider, you actually should be starting the game with. Um, level one fire, you're going to want burn my eyes in the ranger. I've explained why. With the perception, you're going to want flare, because she's in the back. And then you're going to want uh, wildfire. Uh, she's not going to use firefly, because she's most likely going to be standing in the back, and it's going to be hard to get around. Uh, starting fires uh, without setting yourself on fire, so don't do that. Just go with flare. It's a good, you know, if you happen to be early on in the game running out of fire arrows, flare can be useful to help start your fires for you, uh, and, you know, early on. But, you know, just early on. Those are the three there. Uh, level four, water. So, novice less than six. What this means is, is that, that when you're level four in something, you can learn six skills. And what this means is there is only six skills, so you can learn all the novice skills in water. So learn them at your own pace, whichever ones you think are more important. Get them first. It doesn't really matter. You can get them all. Adept, uh, don't take waters of life, water absorption, or ice wall. Okay? So if you see these three, don't take them. Okay? Don't take them. Throw them out. Sell them. Every other adept water, water skill you can learn. Okay? Master, hail attack. That's the one you want. Okay? Uh, level 4, Witchcraft for the Ranger. Once again, she, you can learn all the novice skills for Witchcraft. You're going to want uh, uh, Drain Willpower and Rupture for the Adept skills. And you're going to want Soul Sap for Master. And I'm missing two here. You're also going to want these. This is good. So you're also going to want so an adept, drain willpower, rupture, summon undead, decapitate, and destroy summon. Those are your four. You can actually learn four. Let me save that. So these are the four you're going to want to learn for adept. Drain willpower, rupture, summon undead, decapitate, and destroy summon. Um... <laughs> Rupture is the probably the least useful, so get that last. Uh, destroy summon, and summon un. Uh, <clears throat> destroy summon is definitely the most important. Then decide between summon and drain, and then pick up rupture laps. Soul sap, your master. Okay, so level five expert marksman, novice. Don't take range precision stance. Okay, so uh, there's no point in taking that. Um, then you're gonna not take two of these three. Treat Poisoning, Doctor, and First Aid. You can take one of these three. Okay? I, I, I personally think they're all pretty much worthless. Their, their applications are almost nil. But, if you think, ah, oh, I can't deal with Poisoning, or, or, you know, I get crippled a lot, or whatever, you know, just pick one of these three. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, adapt. You're going to, want to pick up Farseer, Barrage, and Vampiric Arrow. Those are your three most important in Adept. Um, for your fourth, just pick whatever you want. I personally think all the rest are crap. 
These are the three that are the, by far the best in Adept. Master level, you're going to want Reign of Arrows right away. And then when you hit five, pick up Arrow Spray. Scoundrel, you're going to want Walk in Shadows, Hover Feet, Fast Track on all three of your people. Um, as I've said, once you hit level 15, once you hit Master Level Skills, switch that to Adrenaline. And that is it. Okay, so those are the skills. Now what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to jump into the game, and I'm going to show you... Uh, I'm going to show you this character, the Ranger, at the end of the game. So I've shown you what you need to do, what you should skills you should get, and then I'll quickly show you what you should look like. So here's my Ranger, Ranger Black. Level 22. These are the stats. 8, 21, 21, 7, 10, 12. Um, as you, if you scroll over it, it says, oh, it doesn't say base anymore. Okay, so it says from gear. So just do the math. Okay. So 21 minus 10 is 11. So it ended up with an 11. Um, 21 minus 10. 11. Okay? Uh, what was the other? Perception. 3 from gear. Uh, end up with a 9. Okay? 11, 11, 9. Okay? There you go. Uh, if you want to take a look at this, just pause it. Um, I'll show you some of the gear that I got on her here. You can pause it. I never, f I never found a good belt for, for her. That was a crafted belt. There you go. So as you can see, you can definitely kick some butt with some stats. This is what you should look like. <coughs> Excuse me. Weapon, six and bow. I explain why this should be. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll explain it in this video as well. Okay, so some of the things you should look for for gear on her. On her gloves, you need to have a plus one to bow. At all costs, okay? That is the most important thing. Second thing you should look for is primary stats, okay? most important okay. and uh, that's it for her for most important stuff so I also look for on rings inflict to inflict on contacts which are useful but if you want more specific on what each I have a video on what each four of the four people should look like at the end of the game uh, you can also look at that so anyway uh, with her the only thing you really need to look for is a plus one for bow that's the only thing she needs to look for for all of her stats so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that uh if you had any questions about this build if you were if you were scared about doing it i hope you now feel confident that you know what i'm talking about and you know how to uh to build yourself a ranger um if you want as i said before if you want more specifics on uh just exactly what the person should look like at the end of the game you can go to that video and check that out uh in the end game stats video so thanks for watching i'm sendcrad and we'll get you another video